In this lecture, we are going to manage user password in the database. Basically, we are going to validate if the inputted password is same as the confirmed password. And also, we will encrypt the password in the database in order to secure it against attacks. And the first thing which we are going to do is, we are going to validate if the password and confirm password are same or not. And to do that, we are going to create a custom validator for that. So let's scroll down to this confirm password field. And there, let's go ahead and let's create a custom validator. For that, we use this validate property. And to that, we can assign an object. And in that object, we are going to have a validator property. Okay. And to this validator property, we can assign a function which will validate the data. So let's create a function here. And this function will receive the confirm password value. So whatever value we will enter for this confirm password, we will receive it as an argument to this function. So let's simply call it well. Now what we want to do is we want to check if the well, that means the value which we are receiving for the confirm password, if it is equal to this dot password. Okay, so this here, it is pointing to the current document. And on that document, we will have the password field. So we are checking if the value which we have received for the confirmed password, if it matches the value of the password field or not. So this expression will return a Boolean value. We want to return that Boolean value from here. Okay, so if this expression returns true, that means if password and confirm password are same, that means the validation is successful. In that case, we want to return true. But if the password is not equal to confirm password, if they are different, in that case, this function will return false and it will throw a validation error. So let's also specify the validation error message. For that, we can use this message property and there we can specify the validation error message. And here let's simply say password and confirm password does not match. Okay, so we have already learned this before. We have already learned how we can create a custom validator. Now, we have also learned that this validator, it will only work for save or create function. If we use find one and update for updating a model, there this validation will not work. So basically, if I go to this authcontroller.js, when we are creating a user using this create function, at that time, this validator will work. Or if we use save function here, in that case also, this validator will work. But if we use find one and update for updating a user, or any other method for updating a user, in that case, this validator will not work. Keep this point in mind. It will only work for save and create. And we have already learned about this. So with this, let's save the changes. Let's go to Postman and let's try to test it out. So here we have that endpoint, which we use for creating a new user. There, let me first go ahead and let me run this post request. So we already have a user with this name, John and email john at gmail.com. So now if I try to create a new user with the same email ID, it should not create it because we have set this email field as unique, right? So if I go ahead and if I make this post request, you see here we are getting a validation error message. All right. So here it says password and confirm password does not match. So our password validation is properly working. That's because if you see the password is test1234 and confirm password is text1234. So this validation is already working. Now let me also show you that if we don't specify a unique email, in that case also we will get a validation error. So here, let me change it back to test. So now password and confirm password are same. Now if I try to create this user, we have got this error message, duplicate key error. And on which field we have this duplicate key error? It is on the email field okay so that is also working now let's also remove this dot com just to validate whether the email format validation is working properly or not so if i go back to vs code on this email field we have set this validation this is email so basically it will check if the value which we are passing for this email field whether it matches a proper email format or not Right, and this is not a proper email format because here we don't have a domain name. We don't have a .com or .in or anything like that. So if I make a request again, here you see we have this validation error message. Please enter a valid email. So all our validation is working as expected.
now if i provide john at gmail.com or maybe i will call it as mark at gmail.com so now we are providing a unique email id and let's say name is mark and now let's change the password and confirm password so again here i will say text1234 but for the password field it is test1234 so now password and confirm password are different and we should get that validation error message password and confirm password does not match but if we specify password and confirm password as same so let's say test1234 in both the cases we also have a unique email id here and this email id is in proper email format so now this user should be created if i make a request you can see that user has been created with these details and if i go to mongoose and if i refresh this collection now you see we have two users john and mark now here if you see we are storing the password in the plain text in both these cases right so now what we want is we want to encrypt this plain password before saving it into the database remember that when we are working with authentication we should never ever store plain password in our database we should always encrypt user password before saving it because imagine that for some reason a hacker gets access to our database in that case if the password are stored in plain text in our database then he can log in as any user and do whatever he wants and cause a lot of damage and access sensitive information about the users right for example, in some applications, when you make a purchase from the app, your card details will be saved there. The hacker can get access to that type of information if he can log into your account by simply using your user ID and password, which is saved as plain text in the database, which he has hacked. Right. And we need to absolutely prevent that from happening. And that's why encrypting password is a must. So instead of saving these passwords as plain text here, first, we want to encrypt them and we want to store the encrypted password in the database. Let's see how we can do that. Let's go back to VS Code. And we are going to write the encryption logic inside this model itself. Now here, what we want is, we want to encrypt the password before saving it in the database. So this is the best use case to use Mongoose middleware. Here, we are going to use Mongoose pre-saved document middleware. Remember, we talked about Mongoose middlewares in one of the sections of this course. And there, we talked about different type of Mongoose middlewares. And one of them was document middleware. So, we are going to implement Mongoose pre-saved document middleware, which is written something like this. So, here on the schema, in this case, the schema name is user schema. We can use this pre method. And here, we want to implement a pre-saved middleware. So, here, the first argument will be save. And then, the second argument will be a callback function and this function is going to receive the next function so before saving the document we want to encrypt this password field and then we want to save it in the database but we only want to encrypt the password if the password field has actually been updated that means we only want to encrypt the password again if it has been changed that means when we are updating the password or if we are creating it newly if it is not changed, we do not want to encrypt it again. For example, let's say the user is only updating the email or his name maybe, but he's not changing his password. Then in that case, of course, we do not want to encrypt the password again. Right. So here, the first thing which we are going to do inside this middleware function is that we are going to check if the password has been modified or not. For that, we can say this dot is modified. So this is modified is a function to this we can pass the field name which we want to check whether it is updated or not whether it is modified or not in this case the field name is password okay so this expression will return true if the password has changed that means if the password has modified otherwise it will return false so before this expression i'm going to use not operator that means if the password has not been modified then we simply want to call the next function and before that we want to return okay we don't want to execute any other logic in this function so if the password is not modified we want to return after calling the next function otherwise we will encrypt the password before saving it now how are we going to encrypt the password for that we are going to use a library called bcrypt 
For that, let's open a new terminal here. And there, I am going to use npm install command. And what do we want to install? We want to install bcrypt.js. So it has been installed. Let's go to package.json file. And there you can see this bcrypt.js has been installed. And this is the version which has been installed here. Now using this library, we are going to encrypt our password. And encryption is also called as hashing. So basically, we are going to hash our password. For that, the first thing which we need to do is we need to require this bcrypt.js. So let me create a variable. Let's call it bcrypt. And let's go ahead and let's require this library. So name of the library is bcrypt.js. And here, using the bcrypt.js, we are going to hash our password. For that, we can say bcrypt.hash. So hash is a function which we use to hash our password. And to this function, first we need to provide the field which we want to hash, which we want to encrypt. In this case, it will be this dot password. And then we need to provide a cost. Here, I will simply specify 12. Now, what this hash function will do is, first it will sort the password and then it will hash it. Salting simply means that it will first add some random string to the password so that two same passwords do not generate the same hash. It does not generate the same encryption. Okay, that's why what we do is first we add some random string to the password and then we hash it so that it does not generate the same encryption for two same passwords. So this cost parameter here, we specify it for first salting the password and then this hash function will hash that password. So we can do this in two ways. First way will be to manually generate the salt. That means a random string which will be added to the password before encrypting it and then use that salt in this hash function. So instead of this cost parameter, we will use that salt. Or we can also simply pass a cost parameter like we are doing. And that is basically a measure of how CPU intensive this operation will be. Higher the cost here, more CPU intensive this operation will be and the better the password will be encrypted. Okay, so here we are using the second approach. Let me quickly go to the browser and let's search for bcrypt.js. And let's open this bcrypt.js. So if I scroll down, you will see the usage of it. So you see, this is the first way where we are first creating a salt and then we are passing that salt to this hash function. And this hash is basically the sync version. We also have an async version, which is this hash function. So here also you see, first we are generating the salt and then we are passing that salt here instead of passing the cost. But if I scroll down, here we have the second way where we are passing the cost. Basically, we are specifying how CPU intensive the operation should be, the salting operation. And based on that, it will automatically create a salt for that password and then it will hash it. Okay, now if you want to learn more about this bcrypt JSON, you can go through this documentation. I will share the link in the description. Let's go back to VS Code now. So here we are basically hashing our password. And once the password is hashed, we want to assign it back to password field. So here we can say this dot password equals whatever value this expression will return. And in this way, we are encrypting this password. Now, as I mentioned, this hash is the async version. We also have hash sync, which will run synchronously. But here we don't want to run this code synchronously. That's why we have used async version of this hash. So since it is an async version, it is going to return a promise. And we want to wait for that promise to get resolved. For that, what we will do is we will make this function as a sync and then we will await for this promise to get resolved. Finally, once the password is encrypted, we want to set this confirm password field to undefined. We don't want to save the confirm password field in the database. Okay, we only want to use this confirm password to check whether the user has entered the same confirm password as he has entered it for password. This is just for comparison before saving the password. Okay, we don't actually want to save this confirm password in the database. So in the database, we will simply set it as undefined. So here we will say this dot 
confirm password equals undefined. Now you might say we have set this confirm password as required field. Then how in the database we are able to set it to undefined? Well, keep in mind that this validator will be checked once we will receive some value for this confirm password. But in the database, we can save any value for this confirm password. Okay, this required field only this required field will only check whether we have received a value for this confirm password or not. It is not going to check what value we are storing for this confirm password in the database. Okay, so here we can set it to undefined and that undefined will be stored in the database. All right, and with this, our password should be encrypted and that encrypted password should be saved in the database because this middleware function, it will be executed before we are saving the data, before we are saving the document in the database. And finally, from this function, let's also go ahead and let's call the next function so that the next middleware in the stack will be called. And that should be it. So let's save the changes here again. Let's go to our node terminal, basically. So here you can see the server has started and DB connection is successful. Let's go to Postman. Let's try to create a new user. Maybe I will call it as Mary. Let's say email ID is mary at gmail.com. Okay, and let's keep the password as test1234 and here also test1234. Let's try to create this user. So you can see the user has been created and for the password field, the encrypted password has been saved. Let's go ahead and let's create another user. Maybe I will simply call it as test. And here let's say test at gmail.com. And I'll keep these two password as test1234. Let's create this user again. So a test user has been created and you might have noticed how much time it takes. So in this case, it took 731 milliseconds because we have set the cost as 12. So it is going to take some time because it is going to be a CPU intensive task and it is going to take some time in encrypting that password. Okay, now let's go back to Compass and let me refresh this collection here. So here we have those two users which we have just created and these are the encrypted passwords and if you notice these two encrypted passwords are different even though in the postman we specified the password as test1234 for both the users but in the database it is saved differently with a different encryption value and that is the power of encryption so i hope now you know how you can encrypt your password before saving it in the database now, before wrapping up this lecture, let me also show you what will happen if we increase this value, this cost parameter. Let me set it to 16. Let's save the changes. So the DB connection is successful. Let's go back to Postman. And earlier it took us 371 milliseconds when the cost was 12. But now let me go ahead and let me create a new user. I will call it test2 maybe. And here let's set the email to test2 at gmail.com. And let's go ahead and let's make a request. And you see how much time it is taking. You can see it is taking too long to encrypt the password. And that's what this cost means. So let's change it back to 12. Let's save the changes. And let me also go back to Compass. And there I will delete the dummy data. So where we are saving plain password. So I will delete this user. I'll also delete this user, mark at gmail.com. And I will also delete this test user. Okay, so currently we have only one user in our database, which is Mary with this email, mary at gmail.com. All right, so this is all from this lecture. If you have any questions, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.